We are here with Michael Yates, who is the owner and lead designer of Michael Yates Design, a furniture company specializing in handmade modern wood furniture. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You incorporate Japanese joinery techniques in your work. Could you explain that? Well, where, where I first learned about them was through uh, visiting temples in Japan and shrines. It's mostly um, temple and shrine joinery that I try and integrate into my furniture. As a, traditionally, the Japanese historically don't have a lot of furniture. And then where, where I can, I integrate that into my furniture. And then, of course, they, they do have some that aren't applicable for uh, smaller pieces like furniture. So did you get started in the business because you took that trip to Japan? Well, yeah, there were two things. One was my first project I ever made was a gift. I got access to the university woodshop when I was studying uh, engineering, and I made a made a dining table as a gift, and it was the fa my favorite thing I'd ever done in my life up to that point. You know, it was in engineering school, so and very far along, so it, I wasn't exactly going to change majors or anything like that. Um, but then I then I went yeah and studied in Japan language and had an engineering internship over there, and that's when I really fell in love with their crafts of all kinds, specifically their woodworking tradition, which is one of the oldest and greatest in the in the world. Then coming back to the states still in engineering I, I just worked with it as a hobby building pieces here and there in my kitchen a few years later decided to make it my my career it must have been amazing to to live in that culture and be surrounded by such beauty i lived in a traditional dormitory for the young men of this company i lived with them in their dormitory which was an old dormitory so i lived in that kind of architecture and we every weekend I we went to new temples in Kyoto there's just a temple at, on every corner and some of them are just uh, literally just world-class structures and so every weekend I was there basically I'd go see some new ones what else do you you look at for inspiration for your designs well my favorite um, I think the first answer to that question is um, the Danish uh, Scandinavian furniture, just their woodworking tradition is, is I think, um, along with the Japanese, the, the best in the world. Kind of their design uh, philosophy is similar as well. Very refined, like practical design that because of their skill in, tr in distilling what is really necessary in a piece, that's what makes their work so beautiful, the Japanese and the Scandinavian a lot of Scandinavian work as well, is that there's no no extra adornment and the, the beauty of it comes from taking things away that are superfluous instead of adding things. There's like a purity in, in both of those traditions that is what really <clears throat> inspires me in terms of woodworking. I noticed that a lot of your work does have a lot of really interesting details, like, you know, leather drawer pulls. Where do those ideas come from? I just make those up, I guess. <laughs> Usually, so generally speaking, it comes from, you know, all over the place. But on a commission by commission basis, the inspiration comes from the need of the client the size and shape of the thing and what it needs to do and the aesthetic of the room that it's going in a lot of times. You know, I really have to have to make my, my work a lot of times kind of fit with what's going on in their house, you know. And so a lot of times those, those, de those design details are driven by the needs of the piece. And, and it's just a, a lot of them, too, are just to take, um, take any harshness out of the piece any of the cur you know a lot of the a lot of my work is sculptural somewhat it's really just to take a lot of hard edges off of the piece and make it more not organic like art nouveau or anything like that but just make more smooth transitions throughout the piece but in reference to the the drawer pulls that's that was just um, i don't know just something i came up with out of um oh you know what it was inspired by um some other, some leather drawer pulls i'd seen on a hans wegner case piece I just thought leather is a leather is a nice material for a pull, and it really ages well, and it just patinas really well as time moves moves on. And I wanted to try and find a way to integrate it. And you know, your choice of materials is is really high quality and really exquisite. Is that also based just on a client's need, or do you like to experiment with different kinds of materials? I do like to experiment with different kinds of materials, but anytime I can build in walnut, I build in walnut. I just love love. Walnut. The way the finished product looks, the way it smells when I'm working with it, the way it feels, the way it takes, you know, a chisel. It's just a fantastic material. So whenever I can work in walnut, usually when I make a speculative piece, I, I do it in walnut. But yes, I love lots of other materials too. And of course, you're right, it does depend on the client's needs. Sometimes clients have more or less 
developed ideas about what they want. Um, usually they leave most of it to me, but they do have some general idea that they would like a light wood or a dark wood or a warm colored wood or something like this, you know. So yeah, it is driven sometimes by what the client would like. Yeah, I like to, um, recently I made a, a dining set in ash, which I think is a very underserved, at least in America, I think a very underserved material that's really beautiful in the at least that I've seen in American markets but I think it's a great material so that's a recent find of mine that I really like sounds beautiful you mentioned some some older or some past designers influencing you are there any any current designers in woodworking or just in architecture that really inspire you I guess in terms of woodworkers you know, we've we've lost a lot of great masters in the past decade or 15 years of American woodworkers. Um, George Nakashima, James Krinov, I don't know, maybe some others, but they're contemporary, not alive, but contemporary woodworkers that just have had a real um, genuine and a real genuine philosophy about the material that is inspiring. And in terms of design wise, I guess what I'm really interested in right now is integrating uh, some antique hardware into pieces that are more dynamic, like nautical rigging, I'm really interested in right now. Um, I just bought a 1917 butter churn. Uh, did, you, did you say butter churn? Butter churn. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. And I hope to integrate it into a piece at some point. To get back to your question, there's an architect, his name is Tom Kundig, and he integrates a lot of moving, interesting moving parts into his the spaces that he designs using really fantastic hardware. Um, not, I wouldn't call it antique hardware because I think some of it is newly machined, but you know it has a certain age to it, just the look of it. You know, you work on a lot of custom projects. Is there a typical day for you as a designer? Do you have like a schedule that you keep to, or is it all just project per project? I would be lying to you if I said yes. I aspire to have a schedule, but it's really there are a lot of things to to manage doing design work for the next upcoming projects. I have a very small operation. So, you know, running errands, meeting clients at the at a new site, doing material samples, and then the bulk of it, of course, working on whatever pieces I have in the shop at that time. So regular day? No, not really. They're all irregular. But the majority, of course, of my time is spent in the studio. I would say four days, four days out of the week, I really work a full day in the shop. But usually one day a week is, is um, design, a lot of design work or phone calls or running errands. You know, you mentioned that you worked on that dining table, the first project you ever made. Do you think that you would still be a woodworker if you hadn't visited Japan? I, I don't know. I, it's it's hard to say, but I think maybe not. Certainly not to the, I, I don't think it would have been amplified. You know, if it wasn't amplified by the by the trip to Japan right after I made that furniture piece, um, I don't know. It might have it might have gone in a different direction or it might have remained a hobby, you know, for a long time. Yeah, I, I really needed some I mean, it was very, you know, since I had made one piece, since I had some context, at least when I was walking around those buildings, those temples and whatnot, I think it was just a perfect storm. Thankfully for us, that happened. So you get to enjoy your enjoy your designs. Uh, you're stationed in Austin, Texas, correct? That's right. There's this amazing event called the East Austin Studio Tour. All sorts of artists and creative people get to kind of show off where they work. Do you have anything coming up for that? I do. I'm, I've been a part of it for a number of years. And this year, for the second year, I have a, a group show at a house called the Dragonfly House that's on the Colorado River. It's a beautiful home. For the second year now, the homeowners have allowed us to have a, a, group, a group art show there. So that's coming up uh, November 13th, 14th and the 20th and the 21st. So what is the most exciting project that you're working on right now? I'm working on two things right now. I'm trying to finish a piece, uh, an interesting credenza-shaped sideboard storage piece that has a, a desk invisibly hidden into it that pivots out from one corner. It was a really fun design. It's a tricky thing to uh, execute well. So that I'm, I'm liking that right now. And kind of slowly but slowly but surely working on a project with my grandmother. She she asked me about nine months ago to build her coffin for her. She, she loves my work and she's trying to you know proactively prepare for her for her death and um, wants to be buried in something beautiful so we've been going through the regular design process you know iterations of pictures and conversations and we have a, a design nailed down now and um, luckily there's no urgency well thank you so much for talking with us today it was very interesting 
Thank you, Adrian. For more information about Michael Yates and his beautiful handmade wood furniture, you can visit michaelyatesdesign.com. You've been listening to a Two Modern Designer interview. For more fun podcasts, inspiring design posts, and design advice, check out the blog at twomodern.com. Mm-hmm.